Batman. Oh wait, that's the wrong movie. No, 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 Batman. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium spoiler free review of the batman the newest film of course from director matt reeves and now before we begin if you like this channel awesome hit the subscribe button to join movie emporium hit that notification bell at top to find what's coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button as well as commenting below on avh watch including this one so as you can see from the the title of my video this is a spoiler free video there will be some things to talk about the plot but that comes from the synopsis and the trailers but i want to let you know to keep you at ease so when you watch the movie you are not worried about me spoiling the whole entire movie like i know some people do so just to kind of give you that kind of you know thing now to talk about so so the batman is bruce wayne's story of his second year as batman he is now the dark knight of gotham the vigilante of justice he has put the fear of hearts into criminals and he of course is pissing off the police because that's what this story entails him just making everybody mad and the crime has kind of gone up and he's still having trouble trying to be the batman and trying to uh tail between the two sides of batman and bruce wayne well in the process of everything we have a character called the riddler who of course is played by paul dano who has come into the story as an individual who is murdering people but he's doing it with a particular reason he is giving clues away to the batman himself to kind of pull him into the mystery and in essence Batman with the help of Jim Gordon have to solve what the Riddler is doing what his ultimate end game is and how that ultimate story is going to play out and what they have to do well in the process they have to deal with people like the Penguin who's played by of course Colin Farrell who plays Oswald Cobblepot and Zoe Kravitz who's this mystery woman named Selena Kyle as we know as Catwoman so I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has been anticipating this film. Yes, it was on my most anticipated list of the year for 2022. It was actually number one. But I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that a lot of people are excited for this movie and are going to see this movie. So to not talk about it in the spoiler sense, is it's a little kind of hard to do, but I'm going to try my best. And with that said, um, this is a movie that has a really interesting kind of pedigree to it because not only are we getting a director with Matt Reeves who has basically become one of the prominent directors working today with stuff like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, War of the Planet of the Apes, Cloverfield, he seems, at least from the trailers, to kind of get what we want out of Batman, to understand Batman as a vigilante and a detective. And I was really excited by that. The first time the trailer came out at the one of the DC super fandoms or whatever, it is was a year before this movie was originally supposed to really be released so it was like 2019 was absolutely incredible it was it had that nirvana song it was moody it was everything i was hoping for for a batman film and then we waited a year we saw some stills and shots you know covid happened all that stuff and then the second trailer came out that's when this film officially became my number one and most anticipated film because it absolutely just delivers every form and fashion of what you want from a trailer now with that said a trailer doesn't always mean the movie's gonna be good there have been many trailers van helsing where the movie looked great from the trailer but the movie sucked and that's just the unfortunate nature of trying to get people into the theaters to give tickets and money and all that good stuff so but on top of that this cast is amazing paul dano and colin farrell and robert pattinson who i like robert pattinson because i think he has a good career ahead of him uh jeffrey wright and john Turturro, peter sarsgaard zoe kravitz everybody this is a movie to be fairly honest that has what i would consider not the biggest a-list cast that you've ever seen this isn't the christopher nolan trilogy this isn't even the original batman or whatever uh the movies that came out with arnold schwarzenegger uh it just it, this is a different type of movie and on top of that that, you know the main character is a person that people don't really like because of the twilight series so it's a really interesting series but i was really excited for it the other problem is when you get so excited when you get this anticipated for a movie chances are the movie's gonna really suck and that happens 99.999 percent out of 100 times just for the simple fact that it just your anticipation level can actually outweigh what the movie's trying to present 
that's why I'm sure a lot of people didn't like Avengers Endgame. A lot of people did, but a lot of people didn't. A lot of people may not like this movie because of their anticipation and the length because it is a three hour movie. I'm very excited for this movie. I'm very anticipated for this movie, but I gotta be realistic. This movie may be terrible to be fairly honest. Yes, some critics have come out and said it's really great, but you still have to go in with that mindset. And um, I'm glad I went with that mindset because uh, this movie is incredible. This movie is fantastic. This movie is an absolutely amazing achievement in filmmaking, to be fairly honest. That is a lot of big words to say, but this movie not only met my expectations, but absolutely exceeded my expectations. This is a movie that I've always wanted out of a Batman film. Now, am I the biggest Batman fan of all time? No, but I've always wanted a story where it evenly handles the detective story, evenly handles the fighting story, and melds them into a very perfect kind of uh, synchronicity or symbiote nature of a storytelling aspect. This is a movie that you can tell that Matt Reeves it was under a lot of pressure for took a lot of care and absolutely knocks out of the park it's just it's an absolutely incredible incredible film now is this movie going to be for everyone absolutely not because it is a very long long movie like i said three hours long but i think if you see what matt reeves and his cast and his writing staff and his you know cinematographer are doing in this movie i think you will absolutely find that this movie uh, goes beyond even comic book filmmaking this movie actually uh, transcends what movie making is and what it does in its own right and that's just it's hard to it's hard to say that and actually make it believable but this movie just it absolutely knows what it wants it absolutely delivers on what it wants and the cast is absolutely incredible in this movie and i i have to give it that much credit and you know like respect just for that the other thing that i really respect about this movie is it's very very methodical it doesn't have an origin story. It just kind of goes into the story. So you have to know a little bit about Batman to know kind of where the story goes, but there is no actual kind of first act of this movie. It's like you go into the story, just kind of thrust into it. And I really love that about it because it allows like Spider-Man, the Tom Holland franchise to just let the character be the character, let the, the Batman be the Batman or the Spider-Man be the Spider-Man. I just love that there's no origin. Yes, you see a little bit of origin stuff like later on in the movie, but this movie just thrusts it in there. It just you're just you just go from the minute the movie opens and I absolutely just found that kind of incredible it just it feels like a middle act to a, a trilogy and I thought that was something that really just kind of surprised me I was expecting like some kind of origin stuff which we've always had in these movies but the other thing I really really thought this movie does really nicely and really incredibly with is its methodical nature it's slow pace it's willingness to just let the movie be the movie let it open up as it needs to open up it doesn't, you know, thrust us into the battles quickly. It doesn't... And sometimes I just want a story that is a good comic book movie, like Logan or something like that, where it just allows the characters to be the characters, allows them to do what they need to do, allows the villains to kind of set up their pieces and motions and allows them to just do it. And I just... I was kind of completely astounded by that, and I was really happy by that. And I just feel that Matt Reeves... He, it was amazing what Warner Brothers let him do, because this movie under different regimes would never happen you know this is like the lord of the rings trilogy and stuff like that when it was under other another company and they want to expand it down to like one movie it just i find that fascinating when a company just lets the director and the staff just do what they need to do the work stuff like this just speaks for itself and i just i'm absolutely blown away by how good this movie <laughs> i really am does it have problems absolutely but for the most part it's an absolutely riveting movie for quite quite a good portion of the movie and on top of that like the the world of gotham is it just it's a mix between like tim burton's gotham and like christopher nolan's gotham is somewhere in the middle it really feels like a uh, comic book gotham it really feels like a comic book universe and i think this is the closest we've ever gotten to a truly uh, arkham style gotham to a truly comic book style gotham and world and set uh, world building that we've ever gotten in this kind of franchise as batman to begin with it really is an interesting thing when the when you actually set it in a world that feels very much like the comic book and it does it really justifiably and i thought that was pretty great so you know i thought the world building was great i thought just everything about it looked fantastic i think greg fraser's uh, cinematography is absolutely mesmerizing to watch it's like the way he shoots things the way he has his people set up shots and set up like lighting and all this good stuff it just it is a movie that's very pretty it has great soundtrack from uh, michael giacchino and it just Everything about this movie is fantastic. It's really crazy. Even the cast is just absolutely perfection. I mean, I'll leave Robert Pattinson for a second, but Paul Dano as a Riddler is absolutely just... It's horrifying to watch, but in a good way. It's just unsettling. 
He's an individual, Paul Dano, as an actor who really takes these roles seriously, and he does an absolutely fantastic job. I like his character arc. I, I don't like his endgame portion as much, but I think what he does as a setup is just really fantastic. Colin Farrell is the Penguin and Cos Oswald Cobblepot. Just, you can't tell us Colin Farrell. It's kind of scary to think about that he just envelops it and he has the accent of like a New York gangster or mobster or whatever. And it's just kind of crazy when you see him on screen for the little amount of screen time he has. And I just, I was like, this is not Colin Farrell. It can't be. And it absolutely is. And he does a great job. You know, you have Zoe Kravitz, of course, as uh, Selena Kyle. And I think her role is a little underperforming. I think they could develop her a little bit more, but it is a like origin story to her character. So I gave it a little bit of a pass. I, don't, I think what Zoe Kravitz has to work with is fine and decent but there could be a, a lot more to her heft to her story i think she works well with batman so I have jeffrey wright as uh, jim gordon not commissioner but jim gordon these are great supporting characters i love what Je jeffrey wright does as jim gordon i think he works well with the batman he has a very prominent role and jeffrey wright is an actor who really does no wrong to be fairly honest i love everything he's in he's been an actor that really has gained a status as he's gone along as an actor uh andy circus has worked with matt Reeves for a couple films now so he's fine he doesn't get a lot to do in this movie but the stuff he's in you like it seeing andy circus and then john totoro and peter sarsgaard play like you know uh carmel falcone and of course gil colson and i love john totoro he definitely definitely hams up the roles he's in so he's fun and entertaining in this and of course uh peter sarsgaard is somebody i really like as an actor but the real kind of question you have is how is robert pattinson as a batman Robert Pattinson is an actor that hasn't been getting a lot of love. He's a guy that's coming up through the indie scene, and he's done uh, some quite incredible work. And I'm here to tell you that he is absolutely fantastic as a Batman. He's going to, if they keep this trajectory with Robert Pattinson's character through the trilogy or whatever uh, Matt Reeves is aiming for, this is going to go down as one of the best Batmans ever made. He is absolutely incredible. He is perfectly balanced as a detective in the muscle. And he is going through some crap in this movie, as he, as Bruce Wayne does. But because this is the second year of Batman, the kind of, the, the, I, I would say the edge is very not sharp enough yet. He is very uh, difficult to deal with. He has some anger issues and his character really feels unbalanced in the sense that he is still learning from being Batman. He's still experiencing things that he hasn't experienced. And it really shows that the mistakes he makes and the problems he causes in this movie causes even worse situations. And I love that. I love the fact that we're seeing a very, um, a very unlearned Batman. This isn't somebody who knows all the tricks and does a pretty good job of what he's doing. He learns from what he experiences. And the thing that kind of bothered me a little bit, and the thing I was going to make a negative about until I really thought about it, is Robert Pattinson as uh, Bruce Wayne. There's always been this kind of um, back and forth between the different Batmans where one character plays a great Bruce Wayne, one character plays a good Batman, but there's never been an equal opportunity actor to just give great performances on either side. That's what I was worried about with Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne. I was bothered by it. I was kind of like, this isn't very good. But if you think about his performance, and you'll see it when you watch the movie, there's something kind of nuanced about what he's doing, what Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves are doing with Bruce Wayne that kind of echoes his character as Batman. And like I said, it's his second year. He's still struggling. He's still working out the kinks of who Batman is. And that also has to take place with Bruce Wayne. He has to balance that kind of career as a vigilante of justice and a career as Bruce Wayne. And the fact of how they play him out is really interesting. So at first I was really not on board with it, but when you get time to think about it, it really does make sense. So overall, I think Robert Pattinson is great, absolutely fantastic, a great choice to play this character of Bruce Wayne and Batman. And it absolutely shows throughout the entire movie. And like I said, it's absolutely perfection for what it's doing. But, and to get to kind of some of the negative stuff and the stuff that kind of really bothered me, but doesn't deter from the movie, but does detract from the movie a little bit, it's the stuff at the end of this movie, which is always a problem with very long movies, with comic book movies in general. I think the, the ending of this movie is fine. I think it works, but I think it just has problems with its pacing, with its overall end game. And I think that the stuff that kind of comes to conclusion is really just kind of, it feels a little lesser than the sum of its whole parts, as I usually say, that's what I like to say. And with that said, I just didn't feel that the movie kind of completed its journey in the best way possible. Does it make it a terrible movie? Absolutely not, because the movie's incredible. 
incredible. I just have to say that this last 25 minutes of this movie just feels a little bumpy, a little jerky, a little kind of, I don't know. I had a lot of problems with it, but there is a good payoff at the end of this movie with, you know, some characters and some ways that the movie, you know, moves us forward. But I just have to say that the, the like 25 minutes that is the, you know, the big bombastic arc piece I didn't like it that much to be fairly honest it's hard not to spoil it because it involves you know some big things but I think it I think it just doesn't work it's that's my honest opinion anyways uh like I said for the outside of that part of the movie the movie's absolutely fantastic like I said it's up there with the dark knight can't wait to see this movie again it's filled with great performances great direction great uh cinematography and makeup and I hope this gets a lot of Oscar nominations when it comes out or when the Oscars come out for next year. But if you're worried about the Batman, don't be. It's absolutely fantastic. You'll be riveted. You'll cheer. You'll be excited. And there is some cool ass stuff in this movie that really makes you feel like a kid again. So, but with that said, that's going to be my non-spoiler review take of this film, The Batman. Thank you so much for watching. I know you guys are going to see this film, so let me know what you what you want out of this movie. What are you hoping for? What is what moment or what character are you looking forward to seeing? All that good stuff. But thank you so much. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next. If you like this video awesome hit that like button and as always we'll see you guys on the next video peace out